Hello. Uh, how many of you have seen this thing before? Oh, so many people. That's so good. That means we're approximately the same generation, I think. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I've always been so curious uh, how you can actually make games for this thing. This tiny games console was such a big part of my childhood, and I don't even have any clue how many hours I've actually spent with uh, this one and the one that came before it. Of course, back then, I was not a developer, I was just a child, and uh, I didn't really think that much about how someone might actually make games for it. But these days, though, uh, things are a bit different. Uh, I'm an adult now, and I have some more years behind me as a developer, but I've never really been a full-time hardware programmer. Uh, of course, I did some low-level programming uh, courses in university, and I did love that, uh, but uh, uh, most of my time has been spent building things for the web. So how can someone like me, not very experienced with hardware, but with a lot of passion for both retro games and programming, uh, get started coding for the Game Boy Advance. Well, that's hopefully what we're going to find out about today. Uh, but first, my name is Vendikta, and I am a full-stack developer. And I work at Kodeklang, which is my own consultancy that I started two years ago. And uh, we are mostly developer consultants who not only are passionate about uh, code and programming, but also enjoy being leads. And other than that, my main interests are gaming, and these are some of my favorite games. And the gaming interest is kind of what got us here today. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so this is the Game Boy Advance. Uh, why is it called the Advance, you might ask? Well, that's because it's even more advanced than its predecessor, the Game Boy Color, which again came after the original Game Boy. And even though none of these are actually uh, the first portable games console ever made, they're still kind of considered the console that popularized portable gaming. Uh, but now, as I briefly mentioned uh, at the beginning, I am no expert in uh, hardware programming. And there are too few hours in the day for me to learn all the details about absolutely everything for this talk. And I will also quite purposefully uh, simplify a lot of the concepts so it's uh, easier to follow and we can get through more in a quicker time. So before you come after me on Mastodon, keep that in mind. So my journey started out with a simple Google search, how to code games for the Game Boy Advance. And that led me onto quite a lot of good resources and sites online. And after doing some research, I kind of ended up with three possible methods that I could choose going into this. Uh, first of all, I could code everything by hand in assembly. Uh, assembly is sort of the native programming language of the CPU chip itself. Uh, another option would be to code everything in a C, sort of like a bit higher uh, level language, and use a special compiler to compile it to assembly code. Uh, and this compiler would be made for, for the Game Boy and for this purpose. Or uh, I could use something called GB Studio, which is basically a drag and drop editor uh, for making games on the Game Boy. Uh, and all of these kind of have pros and cons. Hand coding everything in assembly is what they used to do uh, back in the days. Uh, but considering what those projects actually look like, I kind of threw that away. <laughs> On the other hand, uh, GB Studio is a very nice piece of software. And since it's mostly drag and drop, it means that you can get started very quickly. But since it's such a refined editor, it also means you'll give up some of the control uh, over what kinds of things you can make. Maybe you'll lose some performance or, or frame rate, and I would be coding a lot less, which for me actually is a con. Uh, so what I landed on was the middle way, using C and a special suite of tools called DevKit Pro, which includes this uh, special compiler that we can use to compile C uh, into assembly code for the, for the Game Boy CPU. So uh, in order to demo this uh, and show you all how we can go from some C code to something that actually shows up on the Game Boy screen, I drew this amazing piece of pixel art. Uh, so let's set up our environment so we can actually put this onto the screen. So the first thing we have to do is install this DevKit Pro package, which comes with uh, all of our tools. But they package this in a nice installer for the Mac. So you can download it and double click it. 
and you get this folder of, uh, of scripts that does things. You don't need really need to think so much about this. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it will kind of look like any other GCC compiler, if you know what that is. And we can also use any editor that we want. Um, most of the things I'll be showing you, by the way, I learned from a very good uh, in-depth guide on the internet, or I, I don't know if guide is the right word, it's more like a book. Uh, it's called Tonk. Uh, it'll take you through everything from start to end uh, about this device and to develop for it. And it'll even show you an in-depth technical information about the device and give you a ton of coding example. So the person behind this uh, has also made a very handy library that we'll be using a lot to, to simplify stuff. So if you ever want to get started with this, uh, this is where I recommend you to go first. So with an empty project, uh, we create some directories. Uh, we take the PNG that I drew earlier and put it in the graphics folder. We also create a directory called source, where our code is going to be. And we create a new file called game.c. And this will be our main entry point to our game. And as is customary in C development, we create a main method, which returns 0 when it reaches the end. And we insert the infinite loop, just so the game won't exit if we ever reach uh, the end of that function. And uh, now, instead of running npm build or relying on Gradle uh, to, uh, to build things, we need a script which kind of does all our compiling and, com and converts it to something that we can play. Uh, and uh, since this is C, we'll be using a make file, which is one of the ways of building things uh, in C. And kind of think about it as a package JSON, but there's a lot of history and things you can do with it, so don't quote me on that. And for the sake of brevity, we'll just copy a make file from the internet, because uh, we don't have to do everything by hand. And if we head to the terminal and uh, run make, which is what calls our make file, uh, we end up with a nice ROM file with a Game Boy icon, and we can open that in any Game Boy emulator. But it doesn't really look that good. Mm, but <laughs> <coughs> I mean, that's because we haven't really done anything yet. And you see also the frame rate at the top is all over the place. And we're not actually using the device correctly. If we had a contract with Nintendo when this uh, thing was like in the market, they would tell us that we need to set this device into the right video mode. And uh, there are different kinds of video modes. Some are meant for cutscenes, and some are meant for gameplay. And they kind of change a bit how the device works and how we're supposed to use it. Uh, in addition, we should add something called a vsync to the top of the main loop. Uh, and the vsync will kind of make sure that we don't change data while the display is doing other things. Because if we do, then we get like split in half images, and it doesn't look any good. OK, so we add those things. Uh, we compile, and we run the ROM again. And now the screen is black, which is a very much better starting point. <laughs> and now we, all we need to do is put our PNG on the screen. Uh, and let me show you, show you the code before I actually explain it. And don't be frightened. Uh, it, it looks like a lot, but we didn't actually add that much. Uh, <laughs> but we do some important things. So the first thing we do uh, is uh, we import the raw pixel data of the image that I drew. And uh, right here, I've actually cheated a bit. Because uh, uh, behind the scenes, I'm using another utility called Grit, which is a tool that converts a PNG image uh, into a C file uh, with the image as two data arrays. Uh, one array of, of uh, the colors, sort of like every unique color in the image, and one array of each pixel in the image with a pointer to the other array of which color it's supposed to be. And the reason why we do it like this is that the Game Boy doesn't really have a concept of image files. I mean, arguably, data could be anything. It's just a set of bits. But what I mean is that we can't just include a PNG image with our code and load it directly on the device. It has to be converted into kind of raw numbers that the Game Boy can understand. But thankfully, we have a lot of great tools that does this for us, so we don't really need to worry that much about it. Uh, the next thing we do is uh, we take those arrays, uh, the palette and the pixel data, and we copy them into specific places in the memory of the Game Boy Advance. And uh, I postpone it as far as I could. 
But at this point, we actually have to do it. I'm sorry, but it is interesting, so stay with me. Uh, we have to talk about memory. So <laughs> in your day-to-day, -day, uh, especially if you're a modern web dev, uh, you don't really think about memory that much. JavaScript handles um, everything in the background for you, uh, unless you do like super exotic WebAssembly stuff or something along those lines. Uh, when you go to the back end, uh, maybe you think a bit more about it. Uh, Java has a garbage collector, Postgres has a vacuum thing, and you have to worry about the server or the pod having enough memory and all that. But it's always more like an upper limit. When you get to C and C++, you actually have to think more actively about it. You have to allocate a place for things in memory when you store stuff, and you have to work with it. And remember, <laughs> and remember to remove it when you don't use it anymore. That's a reason for a lot of bugs. Uh, but at the level we're at now, kind of one step even deeper, you not only have to think about allocating space for things, you also have to think about exactly where in the memory everything is. Indexes pointing to specific places in the memory suddenly become super important. Uh, because if you put things in the wrong place, Maybe suddenly you override an important bit controlling which mode you're in so that everything after that is just garbage. Uh, but memory in itself isn't that complicated. Uh, so imagine that this array is the memory of the Game Boy. Uh, each element can only be one or zero. In other words, a bit. And we have a certain amount of bits or max amounts of elements in this array. And that's what memory is. It's sort of a semi-permanent-ish way to store numerical values. And in reality, of course, this array is a lot longer. When we say the device has 32 kilobytes of memory, what we mean is that this array has room for approximately 32,000 numbers. Uh, okay, so the way we draw things to the screen in our video mode is by splitting our image into 8 by 8 pixel tiles. And this is what the grid utility does. Uh, after it's done that, we copy them to a specific uh, place in the memory. And this is a screenshot from a tool that comes with the emulator, and it will show you the current state of the memory of the device. And there you see that uh, the image doesn't look happy at all. It's like divided up and impossible to read. But this is what the Game Boy understand. We also take the color palette and we copy it to a completely different area in the video memory. And this is that same utility showing the palettes. So we're sort of making all the image available to use for the device. But we're not yet using it for anything. Uh, if we'd compile and run the program now, we'd still get a black screen. So the way we actually use this data and display it on screen is to create yet another set of bits sort of like a, a control object. Uh, and the control object has information about which tiles we want and how many of them in the sequence we want, uh, the position on the screen, and which palette to use. And this, this is how we control the hardware. Uh, it's called memory mapped hardware. So we control uh, uh, the, the things that are soldered onto the Game Boy by putting things in a specific sequence in the right place in memory. And uh, uh, the cool thing now is that we can move sprites around without touching the image data. So instead of moving large amounts of data around uh, whenever we change anything, if we have to actually change the image every time, uh, we only change one, one like data. That is the coordinate of where it is. And I tried to illustrate this by drawing a map. This is kind of how I picture it in, in my mind, sort of like a grid, and you have specific places for stuff, and then you kind of have coordinates to those places. So let's compile the code and see what happens. We <laughs> There it is. Uh, but there's one thing that every game needs, and that's letting us interact with things. Uh, <laughs> So let's just take a quick look at, oh, we still have some time, at how we can move this logo around with the buttons. So exactly like we previously set bits in memory, which made the hardware do things, uh, at the same time, the hardware is also setting other bits in memory that we can read. 
So kind of like the reverse. So there's a bit somewhere in memory that represents the state of the buttons. And in order to use it in our code, we simply read what that bit is for a given button at a given time. And uh, uh, like this. And here I also changed the X and Y components of the control object for our sprite. I don't touch the image data at all. Uh, but we do need one more line, and the reason for that is a bit technical. Uh, we work on a, on a copy of the memory at any given time, because if we want to change more things at the same time, we want to make sure that everything updates uh, at the same time. So yeah, let's not mind that. Now, if we compile and run, we see that, yay, it moves. <laughs> Which uh, uh, was so fun when I first got this working. I was like, oh, all the theory, it makes sense now. Um, so running this on an emulator on your PC uh, is cool and all that, but wouldn't it be so much cooler if we actually managed to run it on physical hardware? And I actually have two Game Boys with me here today, and uh, one original Game Boy Advance SP with like the, I don't know where the stream camera is, it's over there, with the flippy, flippy screen. And I have one device that's kind of from the, the Game Boy Resurgence thing that's on YouTube now, where people are making new, new hardware for kind of doing the same thing, so you get a nice screen and stuff. Uh, but how do we actually get games over to it? Well, they have to be on a cartridge, because that's what the Game Boy does. They look like this. Uh, and you can buy these cartridge flashing stations and, and empty cartridges, and you can put data uh, on them. And that's what we call flashing. Uh, <laughs> yep. These are also a good way to get other people's games uh, onto your device, by the way. And there's a very lively community online on it with people who make uh, absolutely fantastic games. So go there, and they're free, and you can just uh, download them. Uh, but the thing is, when you're doing development, at least I feel it's a lot of hassle to like flash the, the cartridge every time you want to uh, test out new stuff. So I'm so happy that this thing exists. Uh, they're called EverDrives. And they're, actually, they're basically like a cartridge. You put an SD card in it, and you can put the SD card in your PC and just put the ROMs on it. And uh, I've actually already put our little game here onto this cartridge. So let's see if it works. If we, oh, we have some minutes. We have some minutes. Let's see if this works. Can you all see me? Yeah. Good. So I have to power it on first. <laughs> and this is actually an original Game Boy Advance SP that I've modded with a new screen, just so it's a bit easier to see. And now the game is booting. And whoa, there it is. <laughs> and, and. Whoa. And this is actually a consequence of how the hardware works. It's not something I implemented. But uh, I don't know how many of you think about overflows and stuff, but if you increment <laughs> the numbers too much, you kind of get around to where you started. <laughs> so that's fun. Uh, anyway, um, that was everything I had. Thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> 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 And you can find me on LinkedIn and Mastodon and stuff. But please don't come after me for saying something wrong. <laughs> What's your high score in that game? Oh, in the game we just made? Yes. Infinity. <laughs> <laughs>